Good afternoon, once again. Yes, make sure I have my microphone on. <laughs> okay, um, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 566. And the topic today is actually from a meme I saw earlier, which I'm quoting. So the topic is today is date when you're ready, not when you're lonely. And I'll break that down and you'll probably go, oh no, that of course. But let me be more subtle about it. So I'll give you some clues on that in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women, or I should say high-achieving women, create balance in life, love, and business. And every day for a couple of years now, I've been doing these daily Facebook Lives, every day, daily, every day, makes sense, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're on episode number 566. And the topic today is mentioned is date when you're ready, not when you're lonely. And if you just take that to heart, I can be done right now and be a very short broadcast, but I wanted to break this down a bit more because so many people are, um, let me just say it this way. Since the, um, what's the word? Well, not the growth, wrong word. But since the proliferation, that's a better word, of smartphones and dating apps on smartphones, it's very tempting when your heart is aching because you're feeling lonely, just to go on an app and start swiping and clicking through to find someone to go play with. And it's also, it's not even whether or not you actually go out with them, just the action of getting on the app. For some people, it's, a sense, it's almost like a, a um, painkiller because their heart hurts, they feel lonely, they feel left out. And so they're looking for something else out there and they'll go on an app or a dating site to prospect, you know, like prospecting like for gold prospecting for dates and in fact some people who really don't get this at all <laughs> are going straight through to date somebody else to fill in the gap they think they have and in a conversation I had last night with um, I was at a, a meetup with a bunch of love marketing people together we got uh, we get together a few months and I met a new friend there who actually was born in Essex same as I was she's actually over from England visiting and actually she was born the year I came out to America so we're very different ages um, and she mentioned this point about, well, we were talking about it back and forward, um, about relationships. Actually, no, take it back. It was somebody else I met from Oregon, Camille, that was who I was talking to. About relationships aren't 50 50, they're 100 100. And this loneliness driving people to go out and date is a perception of lack that's doing it. So let me just put this together in a way that makes sense. So we talk, we've talked about it for years, we as a culture, as a race, for years, we've said about how relationships are 50 50. And it's like this give and take type thing. Well, in some ways, yes, but in a lot of ways, no. Because what we start thinking is that when we find our better half, our other half, the one that completes us, we'll be fine. Which is, well, I'm not going to say it that way. <laughs> it's an error in approach. I'll put it that way. It's more, it's more accurate. Um, because none of us are missing something when it comes to relationships. We are all whole beings. We are fully expressing, fully capable, fully able to share, receive, give love effortlessly when we remember. When you're lonely, if you're in this place of being um, driven by pain versus by pleasure, then you're going to start attracting relationships that don't serve you. In fact, you're going to be, what you're going to be doing is looking to fill a void you think you have inside which is not real. The pain we feel when we've been broken up with, the pain we feel when we're lonely, is a, well, I would say it's an illusion, but more than that, it's a perception that somehow we're not complete, we're not whole, that something's missing. And yes, when you're a single person around lots of married couples and people who are coupled up together, it can be very tempting to think that somehow we're not complete, we're something wrong with us because we're not a relationship like everybody else is. But it's not true. The reality is who you are, who I am, who we all are, are whole, complete beings. The only thing we do is forget that and think we're less than whole. And when you start feeling less than, this, um, I won't say it's automatic, but it's certainly a programmed in response to go, okay, I feel empty, let me go fill it up from something else. And the challenge is for a lot of people is we want to fill up from outside when the gap is actually inside. And I mean this literally and figuratively. I think literally. Let me see if I do. So in relationships, or should I say when we're single rather, we think a relationship will fill us up. And it might initially feel that way. But here's one of the biggest 
secrets of relationships. The love you feel when you're in love with somebody else isn't from them, it's from you. Oh, I'll drop that bombshell right in your lap. We think a lot of times that we'll be in a relationship with somebody can love us and we'll feel loved. It doesn't work that way. The truth, the truth of love as it comes from within, it actually is um, the resonance, I would say, between us and them. And so the relationship that we're looking for out there to fill up something missing inside of us is actually reminding us to love ourselves. I have a shortcut for that, by the way, and of course you know that if you've watched my broadcast, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. This dance of loneliness driving us to find relationship is a guaranteed path to failure. Guaranteed because what you're looking to do is replace something that's not missing in the first place. I'll say that one again. When you go out to find a date with somebody else, you think it's going to fill a gap. You're looking to replace something that's not even missing, and that is an error in approach. And I'm saying it this way for a reason, because it's that lack of wholeness that we think we have that drives our need to get filled from outside. And that is also part of the codependent disease that, that invades our culture in, our, in all our relationships. So my, my intention with telling you this and sharing with you, this with you is that, first of all, you see that if you've had this experience yourself, you don't have to stay there. And you don't need somebody else to fix it. You don't need some partner, some lover to make you feel better. Because it's almost as bad as going to get a drink or taking a, taking a, well, going to take a, a smoke. It's a... Um, well, in a way, it, in a way, it is um, a panacea, which is not even that. It's more of a placebo effect, because you're using something else to fill a gap you think you have, and then when you fill it up, you think, "Oh, great, they did it for me." No, they didn't. You did it for yourself. We have a bad habit of giving our power away when it comes to this conversation. By the way, we somehow think that we're not in charge and we don't have control and we can't be um, full unless we find someone to love us. That is so wrong and so not true. Who we are as fully magnificent whole beings who happen to forget that at times. That's the reality. So if you feel lonely and think you're going to meet somebody to make you feel better, you don't need to. All you need to do is remember who you are and remember what you're about. But of course, most people don't think that way. But let me say it another way. To go on an app and swipe and meet somebody, go out and cough, go out for a wine and drink and have sex and all that stuff is a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of energetic baggage. If you remember who you are and put turn within to love yourself and remember who you are, for a start, it doesn't require anybody else. It doesn't require any entanglement with anybody else either. And you become more whole and able to choose from a much healthier place. I've said in my other broadcast many times about how Making relationship choices from a conscious whole place is a much healthier way of doing things than doing it from a place of lack or worry or fear or doubt. That loneliness is in the same bucket as that loneliness, fear and doubt. When you choose a healthy relationship by being healthy yourself, that's when the magic can happen. I think I made this point clear enough. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple in some ways and so obvious and, and so hard in other ways. Because I know that when you are feeling lonely and wishing you had a relationship, the mind leaps from, I feel lonely, therefore when somebody else is in my life, I'll feel whole. It's not a unusual way of thinking. But as I said, it's the same idea as basically going to get a drink to drown your sorrows. You're looking for a partner to drown your sorrows. It's no different, except that one of them gives you a hangover, one of them gives you energetic challenges, I'll say it that way. Why not do it differently? Why not choose to love yourself first, to remember who you are, remember what you're about, remember how incredible you are, and become much more powerful in the process? And it's that shift from loving yourself first that takes you out of the loneliness-driven desire to need to have a relationship with somebody else, which is a codependent trap. Because this is where I talk about this before, and I won't talk about it here necessarily. No, it's not up for now. I talk about how being in a codependent experience is to be a victim. And if you want to know more about that, go search my previous broadcast. I talked about it in other places. I'm not going to do it here. But I will say that self-love is a, is a seriously underrated and absolutely um, easy, that way, way to create and attract relationship. Because when you fill up your, thing, fill up your, your tanks first, so to speak, and fill up your own love resources first, then relationship 
is so much easier to attract. For, us, for one thing, you end up looking way more attractive when you're already filled up from inside. When you come from a place of loneliness and wounding, people who like that are looking to take advantage of that and you don't want that sort of experience. So again, fill up your own tanks first, love yourself fully, remember who you are and how magnificent you are. Then when you're on dates, they're gonna be blown away by how, by how amazing you are and you won't be taken advantage of. That's a win-win in my book. And of course, I do have a self-love practice that I recommend. I'll put the link in the comments at the back end as a tool that you can use easily, daily, simply to rebuild, refuel, and restore yourself to the place we can have the relationship you really dream of. Because it is, it starts that easily. And it is a much healthier approach than doing it from a place of loneliness. I think I've hammered that point home just about enough so you know what I'm talking about. Um, Again, I put the link in the comments at the back end. And, and by the way, it's a Facebook Live first in case you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else. It starts on Facebook Live and I'll give you the links about where you can find them. And I'll put the link in the comments for my self-love practice that I do recommend highly. Um, I'm actually going to wrap up shortly because I have another live stream, Facebook Live, coming up at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, which is in less than just about 15 minutes with a friend of mine. So stay tuned and, stay, and I'll be rejoining the Facebook Live um, moment experience at 5.30 with my friend Jen, we're doing a dual broadcast because of the summit she's hosting that I'm on. So you can find out more about that. So, um, that's a little sneak preview. So to give you the links to where you find my stuff, oh, before I do that, homework. It's time you get some homework from me. I haven't had any for a while. Um, if your tanks aren't feeling full, if your fuel tanks, your love tanks, your self-sustaining support system doesn't feel uplifted and inspired and whole, well, besides getting my self-love practice that I recommend, is simply look for ways you can love yourself. Look for ways you can feel into who you really are. Look for the ways you can remember who you are at your most magnificent. Because you've got memories of that, I know. So this is a reminder. And frankly, um, we can all use reminding once in a while. So with that, um, replays. So this is my Facebook Live first. And, um, and by the way, before I do that as well, this is a 5 p.m. Pacific time broadcast pretty much every day. This weekend might be up in the air because it's a holiday weekend. But I will be on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I think. Yeah, it will be. So join me then for another talk, another chat, another hot topic. I've got some big stuff brewing, but I haven't got the frame yet, how to present it yet. So that will be coming. Um, replays, finally. My Facebook Lives go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. I then move them to my YouTube channel. I should say repost them onto my YouTube channel. Which is, which is Barry Selby, and you can please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can watch them there under Messages from the Masculine Playlist. Um, otherwise, you can eventually find them on my podcast, which on iTunes is also called Messages from the Masculine. When you subscribe and watch, or listen to them rather, when you're driving, do other things as well. <coughs> I need to get some water, my throat's getting dried up. But I will be back in at 5.30, which is in 15 minutes, to do another chat with my friend uh, Jen, and you'll be seeing me live again then. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. Again, I'll put the link to the self love practice in the comments. You can get to it. And uh, with that, I will see you again, well, either 5 30 tonight or again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.